welcome to Brea Talks, an insider's look into topics that affect your experiences in the city of Brea. Whether you live, work, or play here, we're bringing you the information you need to better understand your city. So now, we invite you to listen in as Brea Talks. Hello and welcome. I'm Dan Fenstermaker and today Brea Talks Building and Safety. May is Building and Safety Month and so with that being the case we are very honored to welcome Brea's Building and Safety team. Chris Varela, Alexis Mendocino and Rogelio Cortez to the show. Thank you all so much for coming on. Yeah thank you for having us. Thank you. As I mentioned, you're all the building and safety team here in Brea, but let's dive deeper into uh, who you are, your titles, your specific roles, and what you do. Chris, let's start with you. Yes. So first of all, thank you for having us here and be part of Brea Talks. So my name is uh, Chris Varela, and I'm the building official for the city of Brea. I oversee the building and safety division, and I've been with the city for uh three years and two months and my background is in architecture structural engineering and construction chris what do some of your day-to-day responsibilities include uh so some of those duties include uh the direct enforcement of california code regulations title 24 which includes administration the administration code building code residential code uh electrical mechanical plumbing energy, fire, uh, historical buildings, existing buildings, as well as green building standards, state mandates, and local codes and ordinances. Also, I would like to uh, state that the uh, primary intent of the building codes and regulation is to establish minimum requirements uh, to provide reasonable levels of safety for public health and uh, general welfare. This is intended to be accomplished through reasonable controls for the design, construction, and inspection, and quality of materials of use, occupancy, and maintenance and operation of buildings and their facilities. Mm. Also, uh, other duties that I have is uh, to render interpretation of the code, adopt policies, Mm -hmm. and procedures to clarify the intent of the code, and their provisions. Also, we I, we grant modifications uh, to the code when there's an equivalent safe. We also issue permits. Mm. We intake uh, building applications. We uh, issue inspection reports mm. as well as certificates of occupancy, mm. among other things. Uh, and all this is achieved by uh, collaboration and assistance. Uh, from other departments and mm. divisions, such as uh, the planning department, uh, public works engineering, okay. fire department with uh, fire prevention division, and, and and other staff. Awesome, awesome. Well, thanks again for being on. And you brought your staff with you. That's correct. So with that, I will introduce uh, uh, Alexis Mendocino, who is our, one of our permit technicians. Hi everyone, I'm Alexis Mendocino. I've been with Brea for about three and a half years. I am an ICC certified permit technician. Uh, Some of my duties include permit intake, processing, um, monitoring emails, phone calls. Uh, We screen plans. I work very closely with our contractors, Mm. architects, um, and a lot of our Brea residents. Uh, We do have a few staff members that aren't here today, which I wanted to mention. That is our front counter staff. Mm. So we have uh, three building and safety admin clerks. Uh, Not only do they do phone calls and um, certificate of occupancy printing, they do a wide range of duties like public records requests. They are the front line for um, the city of Brea. So any walk in, anytime anyone has any questions, any phone calls, those are the those are the people to go to. Those are the smiling faces at the front counter. Yes, that's our amazing front counter staff. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Alexis. Rogelio. Hi, I'm Rogelio Cortez, one of the junior plan checkers here at the city of Brea. I've been with Brea for about a year now, so my duties include reviewing residential plans, commercial plans, reviewing certificate of occupancies, and also occasionally helping out the planning division with Mm. uh, some of their duties, as in film permits or entertainment permits. Uh, As Lex mentioned, there are staff members here that aren't uh, Mm. present with us today. Um, I'd like to, you know, uh, mention the building inspectors and 
what they do. So they go out to the field during various stages of construction mm. and uh, verify that they're following plans. If not, then uh, they send them back. And they're everybody's best friend to their face. Yeah, everybody but, loves them. But everybody fears their arrival for some reason. Yeah, it's a love-hate relationship. <laughs> it's a love-hate relationship. I like it a lot. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Okay, so as as uh, as we just mentioned, you operate under the, the Community Development Department. And another division in your department is planning, which you've also mentioned um, you partner very closely with. And a few seasons back, we had the planning team on, and they kind of talked about the history of planning and when it all started and you know, how it's changed over the years. Uh, Chris, tell us um, how building and safety has evolved over the past several years. So the last recorded uh, building laws date back to the year 2000 BC oh. with the building code of Amurabi in the uh, Babylonian Empire. Really? Yes. Yeah, so they had codes back then. Yeah, imagine that, 2,000 years B.C. So, wow. And then other codes follow as well, such as the Roman building standards in the years uh, 27 B.C. And then consequently after the, uh, the burning of Rome, other codes uh, were developed huh. in the year 64 A.D. Uh, so and that was to rebuild the uh, city of Rome. And then uh, that was based on creating setbacks between buildings, you know, to prevent structures from from catching, catching on fire. each other. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So and the burning of Rome was the start of the setback. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty that, much. That's fascinating. Yeah, it is. It is. So quite interesting. Also, other fires occur throughout the years. So we have uh, like the Great Fire of London in the year 1660, which also more codes were developed mm. because of that. Mm. And then uh, uh, in recent American history, we have the Chicago fires mm -hmm. in 1871, mm -hmm. which de destroyed most of the city. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's uh, a little bit of the history of, of the uh, building safety co codes. Uh, in, the, in the United States, uh, Formal building codes began to emerge in the 19th and 20th century, and these were uh, mostly at local levels. Mm. And over time, model building codes have uh, uh, developed uh, uh, by organizations like the International Code Council. Oh, okay. Uh, this organization aimed to, to make uh, more unity and comprehensive uh, safety standards across all jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. And these more, more modern codes address a wide uh, range of aspects, including structural integrity, mm -hmm. design, fire safety, mechanical, mm -hmm. electrical, plumbing systems, uh, energy efficiencies, accessibility, among other uh, things. Fire is not the only disasters that have caused uh, devastation sure. in recent history. Sure. We have also uh, other disasters such as earthquakes, floods, hurricane, hurricanes, as well as the, the study of their effects. And this has caused to uh, to have uh, evolution on the on the on the building codes. Sure, sure. Certainly, something more um, more prevalent in California earthquakes, right? Correct. So correct. you know, um, especially here in in Brea, in terms of your your teams, you have to. I'm sure hyper focused on earthquake safety. Correct. Yeah. So, so just like on the West Coast, yeah, that's uh, mostly uh, earthquakes that we deal with, right? Earthquakes. Do you find that where earthquakes aren't as prevalent across the United States, um, the building codes might be slightly different to not necessarily account? Or are they prepared for that in case of a phenomenon like an earthquake in the Midwest or something where m tornadoes might be more prevalent. I mean, is it? That's 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 correct to a certain level. So yeah, so we on the East Coast we have uh, more uh, hurricanes, floods, mm. right, right, due to that. Right. So, but uh, we also have minor earthquakes here and there. But right. uh, uh, and then, like you mentioned, in the mid the mid Midwest, uh, we we do have uh, hurricanes to deal with. So right. So so they they vary a little bit. Yeah, so they're re region designed. to region. Correct. Okay. Correct. Other or the other regions, uh, uh, the design might be governed by by wind, wind design instead right. of earthquake Got design. It. So interesting. So it, yeah, it varies a little bit. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Rogelio, help me understand why. 
Why is uh, building and safety so important? Now, obviously, the word safety is in it, so it seems pretty obvious we all want to be safe. But uh, when we walk in and out of places, we're not thinking to ourselves, is this place safe to walk into? Maybe I apologize to my listeners right now who might now <laughs> freak out and every place they walk into, uh, they're, they're going to ask themselves, is this place safe? But why is it so important to have teams of people worry about that so that everyday folks don't have to? Yeah, building safety is uh, important because it has several aspects. Um, it has a huge impact on human life. You know, um, building codes are applied whenever we're reviewing plans to mm-hmm. ensure that they protect people from injury or death regarding um, structural failures, mm-hmm. electrical issues, or, or setbacks, as Chris mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, also, another uh, another factor is environmental impact. Uh, a lot of these codes address sustainability and uh, building efficiency, promoting environmentally friendly practices, reducing a building's carbon footprint. One of the more important ones as well is um, it helps contractors and architects mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. clarify standards for building procedures. Mm. So that really, it guides them. Right. It guides them into, you know, building something that should be structurally sound. Right. Or is structurally sound. Right. Okay, so this is a good time to mention that this actually will be a uh, three-part uh, three consecutive uh, topic. Uh, you guys are very special. So we're giving you three. You have so much, so much to cover. And let's be honest, this is really for my benefit because I can't keep up. Uh, we just heard a little bit about the history of building and safety and why it's in, uh, so important. And in a moment, we're going to talk about the process of acquiring permits necessary to ensure these codes are being followed and whatnot. Um, but in uh, our subsequent episodes, dropping very soon, by the way, in the coming weeks, in fact, normally we drop these once a month. We're going to be dropping three episodes this month uh, in May, Building and Safety Month. Um, we're going to hear about the differences between residential and commercial construction regarding building and safety and their roles. Way too much. Way too much for one episode. <laughs> so we're breaking it down for the listener and for myself, mostly for myself. Um, so I, I guess, Alexis, I, I think I speak for everyone. Uh, where do I even start with these processes? Yeah, absolutely. So the main thing uh, you want to start out with is our building permit application. Um, it's about six or seven pages. Okay. The first page is just a description of your project, simple things, homeowner, contractor, the address, um, our city is a little bit unique where we, for our fees, we have something called a trust account. Mm-hmm. So I know the word trust can be kind of scary <laughs> for people, um, but essentially what it is, is a deposit account. Okay. So anytime you have a project in the city, uh, building and safety is going to take plan check fees. So in our trust account, um, that's where you'll deposit all of your funds. Okay. The reason that we call it a deposit account is once your project's complete, any funds left over that you've put into the permit process, mm-hmm. it's eligible for a refund. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's one of those things I like to mention because we we like to estimate what your project's going to cost. It could be more and it could be less. So okay. you are entitled to those funds back. Got it. Once you completed your building permit application and you have your plans, whether you're working with a licensed designer, architect, contractor, those are the things you're going to want to submit to building. Got it. Okay. So in, in this process that you've started, is it applies pretty much for residential and commercial. This is kind of like a... The, 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 we haven't hit the fork in the road yet. Correct. So to speak. Okay. So I'm not a business owner. I'm a resident. So let's just go down that path for a second. I have filled out this six page application. I've gotten the green light from planning first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Uh, I filled out my six page application. How do I uh, submit this application? Do I, do I just, do I have to come in for that or how does that work? So you don't have to come in. Oh. Uh, we have three separate ways and you can submit to us. Um, so one that we've all been very excited about in building is last year we launched our online permit center. Oh, okay. Uh, why this is great is because once you go uh, onto the online permit center and create an account, you can track your project in real time. Oh, that's cool. So it'll tell you who's reviewing it, what department. Uh, you can actually make payments online now, which is something we're all really excited about. <laughs> Um, And you can track everything that we're doing, whether we're uploading documents, issuing corrections, and it's kind of your one-stop shop for all departments. Okay. Um, You can submit any record type in the online permit center. 
um, we have all of our options available for awesome. everyone. It's actually more efficient than coming in because then you you don't you, know, you can just see in real time. That's it's like going to Chipotle and watching your burrito made right in front of you. You correct. know exactly that's where correct. you know exactly where along the process you are. And just yeah. to add to that, you know, this portal it's available twenty four seven. Yes. So, okay. So that's the beauty about this. Uh, that's great. Online unlike Ch- unlike Chipotle, unlike Chipotle, unfortunately, which, yeah, yeah unfortunately, <laughs> which is not a twenty four seven. Okay, so even better than Chipotle. Got it. Very cool. Um, any other ways that you can? Yeah, absolutely. So you can um, also submit our traditional way, which is via email. Okay. Um, it would be the same process. So you're going to still want your building permit application. You'll want your plans, but you can submit directly to the building department. Uh, that'll go to myself and our other permit technician. And I think we're going to provide our, our email address, but um, yeah. it'll go directly to building at cityofbrea.gov. Pretty simple email to remember. Okay. Uh, that's your other option. Okay. Um, our last option I'll, I'll go over is you when you can come into the counter. Okay. I mean, you can feel free to come into the counter anytime, questions. You know, sure. We're always here. We're always available. But sure. anytime something does not require plans or a plan check, you can come pull it over the counter. Okay. Um, essentially, you'll bring in your building permit application once we have all the information one of um, our permit technicians or our front counter staff will process it and you can um, hang out for a little bit and then we'll get you set with your permit and your job card same day. Awesome. Okay. So we have the, we have the uh, online permit center. Mm -hmm. We have in uh, email Yes. and we have over the counter. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Well, I think we're off to a great start. I mean, personally for my edition that I'm, um, doing hypothetically doing uh uh this doesn't seem too hard for folks to get started and of course if like you mentioned if anybody has any further questions they can come to the third floor here at the civic center and um come to the front counter and get those questions answered or call or email building and one more time what were what 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 are the what's the email again our email is building at cityofbrea.gov okay and uh, and a phone number do we have a phone number handy yeah, we, you can use our main line. Okay. Um, so our main line is 714-990-7601. That'll go directly to our front counter staff. Okay. They are very well versed um, in building and safety. Uh, any sort of technical questions or things that they're unfamiliar with, they'll absolutely either send it to myself, Rogelio, or any of our other plan checkers or permit technicians. Awesome. And we, of course, will have all of um, this contact info available on the city website and on uh, the actual description of this particular episode. Uh, Next, we're going to talk about specifics regarding building and safety and um, the residential... uh, Yeah, uh, residential projects. Residential projects. But you're going to have to tune in for the next episode to hear that. This is our first cliffhanger, you guys. I'm so excited. Is yeah. We've never had a cliffhanger before. This is a big... We are keeping you on the edge of your seat here on Brea Talks. We're getting dramatic. We're getting... Yes, that's I'm, correct. I'm super <laughs> excited. Uh, Chris, Alexis, and Rogelio, thank you so much uh, again for coming on. And uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Just before we end this episode, yeah, uh, I would like to... As you mentioned earlier, this is uh, Building Safety Month. Yes, yes. So with that, I would like to talk uh, a little yeah, bit about... Yeah, please tell them a little is. bit more. Uh, let the people know about Building and Safety Month. Yeah, so uh, Building Safety Month is just a campaign uh, promoted by the International Code Council, and this is to raise awareness about building safety. Okay. Uh, and the goal is to help educate uh, individuals, families, businesses... Yeah about building codes and public safety. Okay. Yeah, so that's uh, what uh, Building Safety Month is about. And this, is, and, uh, and this has been... Um, this has been proclamated. You proclamated. Know, by by yes. the White House, yes. several states, and many uh, local municipalities. And, and this is the 45th edition of uh, Building Safety Month. 45 years of Building and Safety Month. That's correct. I love it. Well, you guys deserve it. Goodness knows the amount of stuff that you have to know. You should. You are entitled to at least one month, maybe two, in my opinion. But you know, maybe that. Maybe that. Maybe all. All the months. Maybe yeah. all the months. Every month is building Every safety month, month here on Brea Talks. That's right. That's yeah. right. Awesome. Well, thanks again for coming on. That's it for this episode of Brea Talks. This episode and all episodes of Brea Talks can be heard wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on Brea TV and our Brea TV app. Don't forget to follow, like, subscribe, rate, and review, and we'll see you next time. And we'll see you guys next time. Literally next time. (laughs) Yep. When we come back and talk about residential. Let's do it. Hey, thank you for the opportunity. Yes, thank you. And uh, to you, the listener, thanks again for listening in as Brea Talks. Mm